Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to identify and find tropical mushrooms here in Hawaii. Mushroom foraging in Hawaii isn't as popular as in other places like Washington, California, and the Pacific Northwest, but I have a method that's foolproof, and usually when I go mushroom foraging, I can find a pound to a pound and a half of white snow fungus in wood ear, also known as Pepe Eyao. That means ear in Hawaiian. Okay, so this is the Pepe Eyao. I was here last week. This is the Whittier mushroom. I was here last week and I found a bunch of them. I found over a pound of mushrooms, but the conditions were completely different. It was raining a lot, and then we had two days of sunshine. This is after one week of just pure sunshine and not really that much rain. So now all the mushrooms that I left that were babies dried up. That was telling me I should have just harvested them when I found them originally, which I like to usually just take the big ones. I'll leave the small ones there to grow bigger, but if it's not gonna rain, then it's not gonna grow bigger. So this is something that I'm kind of learning as I go. If you're looking for mushrooms and it's super sunny and you don't have any water or moisture, you're gonna have a lot of dry mushrooms. They're not gonna be blooming as much. So you gotta time it right when you're coming back here into the forest to find mushrooms, edible mushrooms, which is one of the hardest things to find that I've found. And it's a lot of luck, it's a little bit of skill. Cool thing about mushroom is that the material that they're made out of, I'm not a scientist or anything, I don't know the name exactly, but this material is basically like, besides your stomach acid digesting it, nothing can really destroy this. So you can put this in water and it'll come back to double the size. You could dry this out, keep it for a year, throw it in water, it'll go back to double the size. You could boil this for 10 hours and it won't dissolve because mushroom will always keep its structure unless you eat it and then your stomach acids dissolve it or you blend it up into with like water in a blender or something like that. But we'll just, we'll keep on to this one. This is gonna be our lucky one today. Usually when I find one little one, it'll start the, the process of like the rolling because I think with mushrooms, the mushrooms find you, you don't find the mushrooms. It's June right now, the mosquitoes are out. If you can't tell, there's one right on my nose. That's nature's tax right there. So when people ask me, you know, what do you give back to the environment? I'm like, dude, I'll give my freaking blood back. Like, don't worry about it. So we're gonna go up to this waterfall. We're gonna see what we can find along the way. June, it's a really good month for mountain apples, rose apples. I can go for Bubba Gump on all the different stuff that's growing back here right now, but let's go straight into it and check it out. Yeah, when I was here last week, it was super, super on for mushrooms. That's only because of the rain. So this place needs rain in order to really bloom off and go. But summertime is now and mountain apples. That's like the one thing I want to scout out today. Mountain apples and flowers. This is taro. This is edible. This is what the Hawaiians lived off of right here. This is ape. Ape is a member of the same family of plant, but it's a completely different animal than the kalo. This one's a lot more toxic. This one is still toxic if you don't cook out the calcium oxide. This is uh, something that they would eat as a starvation food back in the Hawaiian days. This is something that they would eat every day and I still eat this almost every day as poi. This is really, really cool, this fine, this growing out here. This whole area over here is kind of like a wild agro forest. We're sitting right next to an ulu tree, a bunch of wild banana, and this, uh, this kalo. I would say it's wild kalo, but I don't think it truly is. This is just kind of like planted kalo that's been kind of doing really good out here, which is awesome to see. I wonder if this has a big corn. So they did clear this out. You know the farm, did you see the farm over here? Did you see they have a huge farm over here? Heliconia is the bird of paradise fruit. I mean, a flower. All right, so it's the first week of June. This is like the perfect time to start looking for mountain apples. All right here. This is the mountain apple in Hawaii. We call them mountain apples. In Jamaica, they call them wax apples. In uh, Asia, they have all kinds of different names for them. It's a small pear-like, small pear-like fruit. Really yummy, really crisp, like a, almost like a rose flavor. It has like rose water flavor. Really yummy though. I like to use them in baking, I like to make mountain apple pies. I like to um, 
I do all kinds of fun stuff with them. Cooking with them is a lot of fun. I do my desserts during the winter for the tasting menus and stuff. I'm just gonna grab a couple of snacks right now. We'll see if we can find a better tree. If we don't find a better tree on the way out, I'll, um, I'll shake this, this thing and see if we can get some more. So I'm gonna talk to, a little bit about the Heliconia flower during June and May in Hawaii. It's kind of like the flower season. This is the Heliconia. It's related to birds of paradise. And this doesn't rely on bees as the main pollinator. This thing smells so bad. This is like one of the worst smelling um, flowers. So that means that it's uh, pollinated by flies. If you don't know this, but flies are the second biggest pollinators in the world besides bees. And I want to get make a t-shirt that says save the flies, yeah? Because <laughs> it's, it's important and people kind of hate flies for no reason besides it bother you while you're eating. Really, really good for the environment though. So let's uh, save the flies. We'll do our part. This is type of uh, avapuhi. It's a ginger flower. This is that, um, looks like the one that makes the juice. And it does make a juice, but it's not the same um, as those shampoo gingers, the big juicy yellow ones. This is still really cool and it has a, a unique flower. Okay, so we're gonna try this, um, this flower. This is one of the ginger flowers. So, I don't know, this looks like a white version of a flower that grows on the other ginger plants. I'm gonna go ahead and just do some R&D, some research and development, and eat it right now, so let's see. Mmm, so this is, this is like the red one. It's got a little bit more of a film that's inside of it. Completely fine though, I can tell there's no, there's no spiciness, there's no, um, reaction in my mouth going on right now there's no bitterness that's how i kind of develop what's edible what's not that's for me that's my personal way of doing it a lot of people oh you're gonna get sick you're gonna kill yourself you're gonna do that and shut up no you're not so much things are edible people don't even realize because we forgot you know we forgot that this is how humans used to find food they would go they would try a little bit of this they tried a little bit of that they wouldn't fully commit to swallowing a big batch of something until they've nibbled it a little bit, you know? And then if the other thing happens, you can eat it. So just stop worrying. You, you, people eat McDonald's are telling me that you can't eat a, a flower from a ginger plant. Like, it's crazy. I found this um, palm. That's a down palm. Looks like it's got some kind of jelly substance. I'm thinking this is the sap from the palm. Wow, look at that. Interesting. Doesn't have like a tannin smell. Doesn't really have like an intense smell. It looks like almost like a cartilage or collagen or something like that. There's not really like a, um, I kind of like it. I'm not gonna swallow it because I don't know what it is yet. This could be a mushroom, but just look at that. It looks like it'd be good in soup. It's like nature's jello. So I wonder if this is just specific to this palm or if this is a type of mushroom. There's another little lump over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gather a little bit of this. I might have to take this home and experiment with it. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of baffled right now. I'm not sure if this is a mushroom a type of mycelium, or if this is a sap from the tree itself. I know that some tree saps can be in, like poisonous, the ones from pines especially, because they have a lot of tannins inside. This one has no flavor, but all texture. And there's like a wateriness to it that gives me the feeling that it's edible. And I just ate some and I'm not, I'm not dead yet. So. so this is growing on the California palm. This is an invasive palm tree that's not native to Hawaii's forests. And they cut them down to kind of like knock them back a little bit because they get too intense over here and they really uh, smother the, the forest below them. So this whole area used to be all cattle. Then they implanted all these plants from different parts of the world, including this one. So it's really interesting. I've seen this before. This is the first time I ever tasted it and gathered a little bit of it. I'm going to experiment with this at home. I'm not sure exactly how I could use it, but if it doesn't 
give me any if I don't lose if I don't go blind or die in the next 24 hours I'll know that it's edible banyan tree is loaded with mushrooms I had mushrooms there last year. All right, so we got to the top of the ridge. It was a grueling 3,000 elevation gain from the car that we parked at. So now we're at the top of the ridge. We were looking for an access point down to one of these waterfalls. We don't have rappelling gear with us. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to make it to that one pool that we we're looking for, but we did find and get a little vantage point on it. So it's down in here in this valley, but unfortunately we're not gonna be able to get inside of it. What our main goal is gonna be now is finding water. I'm really, really thirsty. I didn't bring any water on this hike. I'm covered in sweat. So as we descend down, there's a couple springs that I'm gonna hit and drink the water from those so I can uh, replenish my water. Right now we're standing in the middle of the Koalau Mountains in between town and east side. So this is kind of the beginning of the windward side. We got a lot of the condensation comes from this side, blows over the Koalau Mountains, dumps all the rains over here. That goes straight down into the aquifer. And that's the spring that I'm gonna find so I can drink some water, I'm really thirsty. But that's a really cool aspect. That's how all this rain, rain water going all the way up, it touches the top of the mountains, it's kind of like a cloud forest up here. As far as foraging goes, there's not too many things up here you can eat besides thimbleberry, the random ohello berry, and maybe uh, some strawberry guava, but the ridges are pretty barren for food. I love this. I love when it shoots over here. It's like a, it's like a fog, fog machine. Okay, so over here I see some ohello berry. I'd be real careful because there's a huge, huge drop off. This is a really rare berry for Oahu. This is a type of um, cranberry actually. And this is eaten by the Nene goose. So this is a really big part of the Nene goose's diet. Up on these ridges in a, in a, on the island that I'm at, there's no Nene gooses up here. So it's fine to pick a couple of them. I'm not gonna go crazy or anything but I'll pick a couple to show you guys. So hello berry, to me, it's really a treat to find it up here in the mountains. I find one, two, this is the third one I've ever found in my life. And the third one I've ever picked. I know in um, Big Island, they have a lot more, and they're a lot more common to find, especially on uh, the lower lava elevations. Yeah, so you don't have to go as high as here in Oahu, these are high eleva elevation Ohello. This is the one berry. That's the Ohello berry. Very, very rare for Oahu. This is a type of cranberry that came here from Alaska with birds. And now it's a native, native berry. And the low-lying lava areas in Maui, Big Island, this is what the nene gooses love to eat. 3,000 feet elevation gain, a couple miles, no water. We got a berry, <laughs> we got one berry. <laughs> That's how it works. And then they think there's a wild, uh, there's a huge city right there. And you can still find the wild if you look hard enough for it, if you work hard enough for it. So good. 
Okay, so super thirsty right now and dehydrated. We did a thousand, a 3,000 feet elevation gain. I didn't bring any water. I don't suggest that everyone do this. I know this area really good. I've drinking out of the water here plenty, 12 years in fact. So I'm gonna fill up right here. See, I don't, I find a place where it's dribbling off, not directly in the water, in the river, so I'm not getting any sediments from the bottom. Yep, nothing inside, perfect. Okay, so when I'm looking for mushrooms, first thing I'm gonna do is take a pattern of the last two to three days. Mushrooms will pop out, they'll, they'll pop out of the bark. It only takes a little bit of water and one day a mushroom can go from this big to this big. So you have to be really quick when you're looking for mushrooms as far as the day and the scheduling goes. From this vantage point up here, what I'm looking for is wood, wood that's been old. It's like on the side of a, a stream usually. Like right over here, I can already see this uh, strawberry guava. Someone cleared it out, this invasive strawberry guava. And the mushrooms like to germinate on there and spore. They like pop out. They fruit from underneath the bark and then they pop out. But right now, it's, a little, it's been a little hot for the last week. So it's been one week of heat. That's not really that good for the mushrooms. What's really good is when it rains for two or three days and then you get the first day of the heat. So last week I came here, I got one pound of mushrooms because I had timed it perfectly. Today, we haven't really seen too much. I've seen a couple of dried ones from last week when I, when I picked them. So an area like that, that's where you're gonna find mushrooms where a bunch of dead wood is. It's damp, it's moist, the sun can hit it. The sun helps the mushroom grow as well. It's a mixture of sun and moisture. This area is known for mushrooms, from me personally, from my experience. I was here last week, I found about a pound of mushrooms over here. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes peeled. What makes it so good is the trees above us, they like always are falling. And in one, two, So if you find mushrooms one area, just keep checking that area. They're likely to keep spawning there if um, the conditions are right for it. Yes, last week I found a bunch over here, but you know, it's been so dry lately. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, let's move up a little bit more. Maybe along the bottom you can find still because of moisture, but it hasn't rained in, a, in, a, in about a week back here. It's been really clear the last couple days. So one of the things you want to look for in time is rain. So when it's been raining a lot, that's the, that's the key to all of this. As the wood is soaking wet, it starts to produce the mushroom. The mushroom feeds off that moisture and the sun helps to make it grow. But it's not, it's not the conditions that I'm seeing. Again, over here, this tree has been giving me mushrooms for the last six months. It's in a bunch of coffee trees. I found the remnants. So here, this is what's going on. Check this out. So the same way I found that other mushroom, the Pepe Yao wood ear mushroom in the beginning, because it's been so dry and not raining for the last week, this is what we're finding. This is the dehydrated white snow fungus, Tremella mushroom, the second edible, edible mushroom that you find here in the tropics in Hawaii specifically, is this uh, mushroom. But because of the no rain and all sun, this is what happened, it all dried up. I had left a bunch of the baby spawns here to kind of do their thing, and I thought in a week they would all be fat again. I misjudged because I'm not the weatherman, I didn't know it was gonna be so dry. If I knew that, I would have harvested all of them when I had the chance last week. So if it was in um, the perfect conditions, it would have been raining for two to three days. The sun would have been out today. Today would have been harvest day because the flushes would have been at full bloom and there would be on albizia, koa wood, or how. Those are the three woods I find it on the most. You would never see these mushrooms growing out of the ground. If you find, find ground mushrooms in Hawaii, uh, most likely to be poisonous, yeah, so. Night blooming jasmine, yeah. It's a, it's a flower that only has a smell at night. It releases its flower smell for the moths to pollinate. So right now there's a smell in the forest. It smells like candy, kind of like bubble gum. This is a uh, night blooming jasmine. 
and it'll uh, it's all over the forest. It only makes it smell at night when the moths are out because it's a moth pollinator. So night flowers are using the moonlight and the moths instead of the sunlight and the bees like regular flowers. Keep your eyes out, guys, and good luck foraging. You know, I know mushrooming is a lot of, uh, a lot of things you hear, oh, poisonous, you're gonna kill yourself. It's really hard, you know? Actually pretty easy, in my opinion, not to find them, but to kind of, if you can judge the, ser the terrain, judge the, how the, the weather's been, that's the, your best guess at getting them. And then also having really good luck like me. I have really good luck, so. Good luck to you guys too, and happy foraging. Don't kill yourself. If you do, it's not my fault. I take no responsibility. And good luck to all you guys. I love you. Follow my channel, subscribe, hit the like button, keep it up, and I'll see you guys on the next, next mission.